What's up guys, Card Protagonist here. Today, I'll be doing a deck profile on my Katana Bow Electro Deity Amaterasu deck from the brand new Climax Booster, Golden Gaga. I have some requests for this deck profile that I haven't covered, so thank you guys so much for your lovely commands. The Golden Gaga Climax Booster has given us an upgraded Amaterasu, now with the ability to hit 14 hit attack or defense, to gain triple attack or counter attack, there's so much utility packed into a single card. Electro Deity Amaterasu is also one of the top decks in the meta, being one of the few decks that can utilize the infamous zero turn loss woe due to its incredible draw power, so let's jump right into it. For the buddy, we'll be playing Electro Deity Emissary Autora because it is a size zero and mostly because the ratio of the deck right now. Right now, I'm playing 3 3 Amaterasu, and for most games, I really do not know which Amaterasu I will write into. So, most of the time, the more consistent choice is actually the size zero because you'll be guaranteed to call it every single game. So the buddy is going to be Otora because she allows me to charge and draw. So the first card of the deck will be 3 copies of Electro Deity of Light Amaterasu. She's from the previous set and she's still very very important in the deck. Before I begin this deck profile, I'm going to explain how this deck works overall. So the main engine of the deck is actually your item, Kagura Bell of Worship, which allows you to possess one big monster on top of your item, so it will become your item. So you're beginning its attack and defense and crits. It's actually a very very unique skill, which is exclusive to Electro Deities. So, it is very important to have this bell because you will be able to transform into any of the size trees on your hand. And you'll be able to gain so many benefits just by their powerful abilities. So, based on Amaterasu has a core cost of 2 gauge which is pretty decent because for 2 gauge you're getting a very powerful unit which allows you to farm on your turn and your opponent's turn. It has a counter ability. Choose and use one of the following abilities, you may only use this ability once per turn. So, you can use it during your turn or your opponent's turn, which is great. You could either first put the top card of deck into your gauge and for this turn this card gains plus power, AK and double attack. So this is used during your turn if you want to push for game. Second ability, you gain 2 life, draw a card and for this turn it gains defense plus 4k which makes it a whopping 12k. So the main reason why we still use 3 copies of her is because if you're going first, her ability is more likely to be better because since you only attack once, it is similar to the new form which you... Okay, granted she has 3 crit but you both will be drawing 1 card but she gains you 2 extra life while you have to pay 1 life with her. This is still a very very relevant card in the Amaterasu deck so therefore I still play 3 copies. However, our main right target will still be 3 copies of Heavenly Deity Amaterasu. She has a great stat boost compared to her previous form, 838, which is amazing. And her new abilities makes her extremely defensive or offensive depending on your turn or your opponent's turn. And the best part is you can draw even using any of the abilities because the counter abilities lets you pay on life to draw on card then choose the abilities. So you'll be guaranteed a draw, which is nice. Her core cost is 3 gauge, which is slightly more expensive than her previous form. And her counter ability is pay one life if you do draw a card then choose and use one of the following abilities. You can use it once per turn. For this turn, this card gains 6k attack power and triple attack. So that brings her to 14,000 which allows you to run through most of the meta decks. Her second choice is for this turn, this card gains 6k defense and counter attack. 14k defense is nothing to scoff off and she's able to tank the toughest of monsters in the game, even Astro Dragons. And the counter attack is beautiful because since she cannot be destroyed as an item, your opponent's bot will be destroyed by the end of the battle phase. So she's just such an amazing card, allowing you to draw, she has amazing stats and she has triple attack with 3 crits which is amazing. And also there are some cards in this deck that you can combo with to do even more little damage, such as the impact because there will be a combo I'll be showing you later which abuses this impact. So we play 3 copies of the new Amaterasu because it's equally important. The last possessed target we play in the deck is 2 copies of Mizu Hanome. She's a very very strong meta counter right now because her ability to rest and bounce stuff just makes this card so dang good. She has a core cost of 2 gauge and her counter ability is activate, choose and use one of the following abilities. Either one, rest your opponent card and gain 2 life or second, bounce a monster on your opponent's field to your hand and deal one damage to your opponent. This ability is very strong especially against Dimension Dragons and Mystic Knights. Mystic Knights reason is because they can't be destroyed by card effects however if you bounce back the key card you'll be able to continue destroying and for D Dragons it's because if you bounce back the Agonia they won't be able to call Agonia and they won't be able to farm. She's mostly used as a control card and not really as an offensive card. However, I really like her because she really disrupts the opponent's play. So we play 2 copies. Now for the advantage engine, we play 3 copies of Goryu. I just love her art and she's a really powerful card overall. You may only call her once per turn, so she's really similar to Apis. When this card enters the field, check the top 3 cards of the deck. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into the drop zone. This card is not only good in Electro Deities, it's good in all Katana World decks because you'll be able to check top 3 and add one card, giving your deck extreme consistency. And yeah, her being an Electro Deity really helps the deck as well because there are a lot of times that you need Electro Deities on the field to activate certain cards, such as the Bell Searcher because you need an attribute on the field in order to activate those effects. And she's not hindered by the fact that she doesn't need another Electro Deity on the field to activate her skills, so she's an amazing card. 3 copies for extreme consistency. Now 4 copies of Emissary Otora. Our body monster, 
She's overall a great card because she allows you to net pluses. When she enters the field, if you have another electro duty on the field, you can charge one gauge and draw one card. It's not once per turn, so you can spam multiple copies. Just watch out for loyalty. So four copies because she gives you extra speed to the deck and extra gauge. The last one of the deck we play is two copies of Shuto. I really love her art. She's really cute. And she does give Amaterasu an extra kick. So card costs one gauge and put electro duty from a drop zone in your soul. So you could put either the item or any spells with Electro Deity in its name and pay 1 gauge. All Electro Deity's item on your field gains with 3k attack, 3k defense and if your life is 6 or less, they gain 1 extra crit which is great because she makes Amaterasu a 4 crit triple attacker which is amazing. And also as a soul guard monster, she has move so she'll be able to protect your life points granted if your opponent doesn't have penetrate. Now let's go on to the spells. Amaterasu have the best draw power in the game and the best search. So 4 copies of Electro Deity Festival. Choose and use one of the following abilities Put up to one Electro Deity item from your deck into your hand and shuffle your deck. Or counter abilities stand Electro Deity on your field, which means you'll be able to stand your boss monster, which is awesome. And also search out your bell, which is the main winning image of the deck. The reason why I play for is because even if you already have your bell, she resends Electro Deity, which gives you extra damage to push for game. So four copies because you really really need to have bell in your hand in order for the deck to even work. Next, two copy of the search spell Miracle Fighters. It's a dual world spell which you'll be able to use in Dungeon World and Katana World. So cast cost, choose an attribute on the field and pay 1 gauge. Put up to a side tree monster or an item with the same attribute. So this card is extremely important in Electro Deities because you'll be able to search one of these cards, which is the combo pieces. In the opening hand, you must have these two cards in your hand in order for you to actually play the game. So we play two copies because we actually do have enough search power right now. And two copies is just right. Next up, three copies of Ritual Harvest Prayer. You may only cast this card if you have an Electro Deity on your field. Cast cost, pay 1 gauge, draw 2 cards. Then if you have an Electro Deity item with soul in a field, you can draw an additional card. 1 gauge to draw 3 is amazing, and even if you do not have Amaterasu out yet, you can still draw 2, which is awesome. This is one of the main reasons why Amaterasu can go 0 turn loss well, is because of the insane draw power they have. Drawing 3 cards with 1 gauge for practically no setup is just insane. So we play 3 copies for the insane turbo. Next up, another crazy spell that defines Amaterasu, 4 copies of Electro Deity Welcome. So you can only cast this card if you have Electro Deity on the field. Cast cost of 1 simple life, charge 3 gauge, then look at all your gauge and pull up to one of them into your hand. This is a very powerful card because it allows you to check your gauge and add one card. So it gives you insane consistency because you'll be able to check more than 5 cards and you can get to select any of them. This is actually my favourite card in Electro Deities due to its artwork and its insane skill. Next up, 2 copies of the promo Kagura Divine Wall. This card is mostly used against Lost World cards, such as Vanity Hearts Destroyer, because it prevents your item from leaving the field. For this turn, Electro Deity items cannot leave via opponent's card effects, so Vanity Hearts Destroyer won't be able to destroy your Amaterasu, because she's the winning image of the deck and you don't want her gone. Secondly, choose Electro Deity in battle, and for this battle, she gains 6k attack power, 6k defense, and counter attack. So even if you're not using for empty sand field, you can use it as a negate, because 14k defense plus 6k defense makes Amaterasu 20k defense. It's pretty much a free negate, and he has counter attack as well, so your opponent will smash itself in the face. So 2 copies. Next is 4 copies of one of the best negates in the game, Divine Punishment. So counter ability, choose and use one of the following two. For this turn, all cards of bonus field drop 3k attack, 3k defense, and 1 crit or destroy a set spell or item on the field. But most importantly, it's the ability to drop their power. Because your Amaterasu is such a tanky monster, dropping the power means they are unlikely to hit. So 4 copies because it's such an amazing card. Next, 4 copies of the new negate from Golden Gaga. The artwork is amazing, I really, really love the artwork. Counter ability, 95 attack. This is very important because it does not require you to have Electro DT on the field, and this is one of their outs against FTKs. So counter ability, 95 attack. Then if you have Electro DT item with soul, Charge 1 gauge, gain 1 life, and choose an attacking card, that card cannot stand. This card is so crazy because this is basically Astro Dragon's Immobilized Tactics at a free cost, gaining gauge, gaining life. So this card alone gains a 5 star from me for its artwork and its ability. Next is 2 copy of Electro Deity Returns. Pay 1 gauge and put up to a total of 2 Electro Deity monsters of items with different names from your drop zone into your hand. So basically it's a retrieval, just in case your stuff get destroyed, you want to retrieve that Shuto or Extra and Matarasu, you can get it back to your hand. Overall, it's an awesome card because pay 1 gauge to retrieve 2 cards in your hand is basically a plus 1, so we play 2 copies. For some meta hate cards, we play 2 copies of Cherry Blossom Dance. One of Amaterasu's greatest weakness is actually the Quad Punk matchup because Brosus doesn't send by effect but by core cost, and cards like this actually doesn't work. This is mostly used against Vanity, and that's it. However, with Cherry Blossom Dance, if your item will leave your field, you may put this card from your field in the drop zone. If you do, the card remains on the field. So if Brosus were to send off Amaterasu, 
you can just use this card in the basement. So it is pretty good. And also he has another unique ability. Your opponent cannot call monsters from the drop zone. So it hurts a lot of decks actually. It hurts D Dragons with their machine sacrifice. They hurt Astro Dragons emergency tactics. And they hurt Black Dragons Abbey Mill. And only assassins to a certain extent. I'm really happy that Bushir made this card because it's kind of out against God Punks and two copies is just nice. And finally, one copy of Sakura Fubuki, one of the best spells in the game. So by paying 2 life, you counter speed nullify any spell by opponents. This is insane, and that's why it got hit to 1. Back then, we could play 4, we would play 4 because it's just an OP card. Paying 2 life is nothing since Amaterasu gained life all the time. And this card was the meta-defining card. However, it got hit, so we just play one copy. So for the item, we play 3 copies of Kagura Bell of Worship. This card is very important if you want to transform into one of these. So how it works is, at the start of each player's main phase, you may put a size 3 Electro Deity from your hand on top of this card. If you do, that card is treated as an item on your field. However, at the end of each player's turn, equip this card from your item soul and return the previously equipped card to your hand. So basically, she bounces back to your hand. You can switch most if you want to. So let's say turn 1, you have her. During your opponent's turn, you can switch it to her and become the 14k defense wall. This card is very powerful because it's immune to destruction. This card on the field and items with this card in the soul cannot be destroyed. This is why Amaterasu is very powerful because she can never be destroyed and her only weakness is actually God Punks because God Punks is sand, it doesn't destroy. So God Punks tend to be an unfavored matchup. And finally, if this card in the soul of item, it cannot be dropped by cards. So cards like Dragot Var cannot remove its soul, which is very important because you really want an item on the field at all times so that it can transform during your opponent's main phase or your main phase. So 3 copies of the item because we play 5 copies of the item searcher and that's the perfect balance. And finally, 2 copies of Bright Future. The one reason why I really like this card is because right now Armaterasu has triple attack and she can abuse the heck out of this impact. Let us go through the impact first. You may only cast this card if your Electro Deity item has souls, so it must be transformed into Armaterasu. Cast cost 3 gauge, choose an Electro Deity on your field and stand it. For this turn, that card gains additional 2 critical, can attack during the final phase and its attack cannot be nullified when it's attacking alone. So imagine this. What I'll usually do is, so I'll transform into her, I'll swing first, I won't use a counter ability, then during the final phase, I'll activate this card and resend her using ability. She gain extra crit, become 5 crit. If you have Shuto, if she wants 6 crit, and then activate her ability to pay one life, draw a card, and give her triple attack. So right now she has triple attack with 5 crits. Swing, swing, swing. Cannot be nullified. There's 15 crit in total. That is very easy to pull off. Unnullifiable 15 damage is just awesome. However, if you do not want to play the impact, another good alternative is actually to play Lost World. Because Lost World just works so well in Amaterasu. Even though Lost World isn't part of this decklist, I'm going to go through some cards that help you turbo during Lost World. So for the first card is actually Amaterasu. You actually do not call her because if you're going 0 turn Lost World, you can, call, you can go to the center or side and use a draw ability to draw one card. Every card you draw in Lost World is insane because they change the game so much. So that's one. Next up is 3 copies of the Goryu. Goryu is just an amazing card in any deck. You do not need to have an Electro Duty on a few and you can check the top 3 cards of the deck and add one into your hand, rest a good drop zone. Once again, this card is crazy because you check top 3. It's actually much better than Amaterasu in my opinion because you don't need to pay the gauge. And also she allows you to check top 3 which means you will most likely pick up the card that you need from the ability. So 3 copies of her is amazing. 4 copies of Otora because once you have her on a few, Otora is live already, you can charge and draw. Drawing extra cards in Lasso, amazing. Now this is my personal favourite tech, it's 2 copies of Miracle Fighters. Just target your Vanity Hearts Destroyer and find a Lasso's Hazer, the triple attacking weapon of doom. So I really like this card because you get to search out one item with the same attribute as a chosen card attribute. So it's a pretty cool tech. Yeah, it's just nice because Lasso's Hazer is just insane. 3 copies of draw spells. Uh, most likely, if you're going 0 turn, you're just going to pay 1 gauge to draw 2, which is awesome. But if you have farmed properly and have an item with a soul, you'll be able to draw 3. And during Lost World turn, that is insane. It is so much better than Nidron since you do not need discard cards. Now, this card is bonkers in Lost World. If you think Goy is bad, this card is even insane. Charging 3 gauge, then checking the gauge for 1 card is just insane. There's so much consistency. And once you cut this card in Lost World, you pretty much guarantee whatever you need in the deck. And these cards are the reason why Lawso is so good in Amaterasu and there's so much consistency in the deck. That's it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoy my deck profile on the updated Amaterasu deck. Once again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch my deck profiles. Please leave a comment down below on which of the group guys you would like to see next. And also, if you're looking for decks like these, do check out my online shop www.cardprotagonist.com. Links in the description box down below. We mail worldwide right to your doorstep. So till next time, keep on buddy fighting!